Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Wellman and welcome to this month's City Scene. This month we have some interesting topics that range from my favorite annual event at the zoo, a place where kids can go after school to learn and feel safe, and some cool new biking facilities that have been installed around the city. So stay tuned so you and I can learn about these events and more together. The Midco Aquatic Center is hiring part-time lifeguard positions, work while going to school, flexible schedules, and bonus opportunities available. No certification needed to apply. Find out more information at midcoaquaticcenter.org slash employment. All around town, from stores to playgrounds, babies are on the move. And there are diseases that are on the move too. And some of these spread easily. To best protect him from 14 serious diseases by the time he turns two years old, vaccinate him according to the recommended schedule so he can go on about his business and you can have peace of mind. For more reasons to vaccinate, talk to your child's doctor or go to cdc.gov forward slash vaccines. Welcome back, everybody. As you know, road construction season is finally winding down. But up next is Shannon Austin telling us about a few major road construction projects that are ongoing. Hi Sioux Falls, today we are on one of our last street construction updates and we are out on the east side of the city at Arrowhead Parkway from right around Sycamore Avenue all the way out to Highline and we welcome to the show Chad Hannish. Chad, welcome to the show. Thank you. So this project got started a little late. Can you give our viewers just a quick update on why? Um, well it's obviously a big project. Yep. Um, there was a lot of uh, right away issues that we had to work through and that was probably the biggest element is we have to have all the right away and the easements all those documents taken care of before it can go out to bid letting okay so but now that the contractor got started in probably mid to late august he's really moving along quickly what what is he working on right now right now he's getting the gravel down and getting it ready for pavement okay so, so they've They've put down, or they've put in a lot of the underground, or okay. most of the underground on this portion of the project, the water main, storm sewer, and then uh, they can get ready for the paving portion of it. So is he just focusing on the area near Highline? Correct. Okay. Yep. For this year, because it was late in the year, we, we bid it uh, with a focus to just get Highline Avenue intersection completed. Okay, so there was, I've driven by a few times, there was a lot of deep trenches. Was What kind of utility work? You said water main. Are we putting all new water main in? Yes, for the length of the project. Uh, so they're just focusing on High Line right okay. now, but you know, over the course of next year, it'll be all new water main for the length of the project. Lighting, storm sewer, um, not much for sanitary, just some repairs. Okay. Um, but that's mostly it for underground. And then at Highline, we of course have the temporary signals. Will those temporary signals be up throughout the winter time? Through the winter, they will. Okay. Um, there is a chance that the electrical contractor could come in and install the the, the actual permanent signals. Okay. Um, but there's quite a time frame on those, and so if we need the temporaries through the winter, we it'll be able to accommodate that. So not knowing, of course, if we get back here to check on you in the next couple of months, what can our drivers expect during the winter time for construction activities or not? Or They shouldn't really see much through the winter. Like I said, maybe the signals here at Highline, uh, but for the most part, there won't be any construction through the winter. We'll have okay. it back open for all the users. Okay, so there won't be any construction going on? Correct. Okay. And then will, we, will the drivers be able to drive on the new concrete or are we still going to drive on the existing lanes that are currently we're driving on right now? We're going to be opening up the existing lanes that they're driving on right now plus the new concrete. Okay. So then, unfortunately, we get to have construction all in 2018. Right. Where, where will the contractors start probably then in March or April? What, what, can, what, what can we look forward to? Well, they'll work focused on the whole south side of okay. Arrowhead, uh, most likely starting towards Sycamore Avenue and working east. Okay. And then I, I guess I forgot to ask you, but what, what type of typical section are we looking at along this corridor? Because it was a five-lane section, two lanes in each direction. Is that the same thing we're putting back in? Nope. This will be upgraded to three lanes in each direction. Okay. We'll have a center median. We'll have turn lanes at all the major intersections. Okay. Some of them will have dual lefts. Um, 
but at least three lanes in each direction and turn lanes. Okay. And then let's just focus a little bit on the Veterans Parkway intersection. Um, our project kind of stops a little short, but we asphalt pave through the intersection. That intersection, is that going to be completed with the high, with the Airhead project, or we, do we have to come back later and do that? That'll be a later project. Okay. Yep. Yep. We'll be stopping short of Veterans Parkway. Okay. Well, you got a lot of work to do yet then. Yeah. Excellent. Yep, there will be. So far, um, how do we keep in touch with our property owners? So is, are there newsletters or? Newsletters, the city's website okay. is always a good one. Press releases, those okay. are uh, the message boards. Those are all the things that we use to communicate. All right. Well, great. Thanks so much for your time Thank today. Thank you. And we're on to our next stop. Well, our last stop today is out here on the east side still on Veterans Parkway from Maple Street all the way up to Rice Street. We welcome back to the show Mike from the DOT. Welcome. Thank you. We are so excited to see pavement out here. So you're we, def definitely almost done. Yes, we have Excellent. a lot of it out here. I would say we're probably about 60% of the way done with Wonderful. our uh, concrete paving out here. We have uh, two outside lanes of the southbound um, Veterans Parkway paved out here. As you can see behind us, they're they're heading back north. Okay. Um, I would say anticipation, we're probably still another month out before concrete paving's completely finished out here, but the contractor's uh, knocking it out of the park. Excellent, and tell us what's happening at Rice Street, that intersection. Uh, Rice Street intersection at this point, um, we're completely built out. Um, you'll see if you're driving on existing rice that, that we are um, moving that intersection and going to an at-grade crossing. We'll have a full lighted intersection when the, when the project's complete. And are the traffic signals up on Rice Street yet? Uh, currently they are not, but okay. uh, once the project is complete, we will have uh, uh, fully actuated traffic lights up there. So probably by end of October, do you think we'll have those signals going? Uh, I would say by the end of October, I believe the completion date on this project is early November. Okay. So right in that range. Perfect. So Rice Street's almost done. Um, so folks that are driving on Rice Street, I'm sure are going to be very excited to drive on the new Rice Street. For sure. You will close it though until the whole thing is done or will you open it up early? You know, I, I believe the phasing has us getting on to Rice before the completion because we have to take some of the old Rice Street out okay. in general. I wouldn't anticipate us to be on the, the new Rice for probably another month yet. Okay. So have um, with this paving, um, who's our contractor again? Contractor out here is TNR Contracting. They're based okay. here out of Sioux Falls. They do a lot of work for the DOT. So we were just on Arrowhead Parkway. Are they the contractor out there too? They're the prime contractor on that project as well, yes. So explain to our viewers, so that must be kind of a cost savings for them to have two projects pretty close together. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you, you a couple of things. One, TNR does a lot of work for, for both the state and the city okay. um, in general. It, with it being a local contractor, we like to see that. Um, with them both being very close together, obviously our mobilization costs go down just okay. because they're here and, and they can jump back and forth between the two projects. Um, it turns out to be a win-win. Okay. So, um, tell, to remind our viewers again, expected opening is in November. Yep. And that will also, will that also have the, the bike trail be done? The uh, bike trail will not be done until, until next year, I okay. believe, at this okay. point. So, um, all of our concrete paving, um, pavement markings, uh, lighting, and, and such will be up and, and running. The, the paving for the actual uh, bike trail will be completed next year. Okay, and, and we have LED lights, street lights on this? We do have LED lights. So that'll lights. look really different for a lot uh, of our drivers. It will too. be, absolutely. Yeah, so this will be, will the whole six lanes be open to traffic for the winter time? Yes, I believe so. Okay, excellent. All yep. right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, and we are so excited about yes. this project. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Did you folks know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Let's join Mary Michaels as she explains some of the risk factors and we learn more. Hi, welcome to City Scene. I'm Mary Michaels with the Sioux Falls Health Department and Live Well Sioux Falls. You're probably seeing a lot of pink around town these days and that's because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And with me today is Carrie Dreck from the American Cancer Society who's going to tell us a little bit more about what's happening this month. And Carrie, we know that breast cancer is a health issue that tends to be on women's minds not just during October but throughout the year. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening with women and breast cancer? Yes, so breast cancer is actually the most commonly diagnosed form of cancer in the United States and in South Dakota. In fact, one in eight women are diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. Nearly 700 South Dakota women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year and 100 women will die. So. But there is some, there's good news out there. So since 1989, 
our rates of breast cancer diagnosis have gone down 38 percent. In fact, 297,000 lives have been saved and we have more than 3 million women that are breast cancer survivors. That is really good news to see that things are moving in that direction. Absolutely. And wouldn't you say that maybe some of that shift we're seeing in, in the number of women living with breast cancer or becoming survivors is due to the fact that they're paying attention to their health and they're getting some of those recommended screenings and those health checks that can catch cancer early. That's an important thing to do, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's certain uh, things that we can't help like our race or our family history, but there are things that are definitely um, that women are doing right now that are making it so we are getting diagnosed sooner. Um, people are getting their mammograms done, which is by far the number one form that we recommend people doing. They're um, noticing uh, admiralities with their breasts and they're talking to their doctors. They're asking questions. They're talking about their family history. So really, if you can get diagnosed in an early stage one, your risk of being able to survive is at 99%. That is really great news. And, and that speaks to prevention with a lot of different chronic diseases as well. There's those risk, risk factors, like you mentioned, that we can't control, our age, our race, our gender. But there are a lot of things where we actually have some control over our health, some of our lifestyle choices that we make. So talk a little bit about how women can really take charge of their health by focusing on some of those lifestyle behaviors. Yes, there's certain things you do in your life that do make you a little bit more risk, have a little bit more risk for certain types of cancer. Uh, obviously, tobacco use is one of them. When we recommend limiting or avoiding alcohol, having a healthy diet filled with fruits and vegetables and lean proteins, um, and getting, getting out and getting active. At least 30 minutes of exercise every day is what we recommend, and staying at an overall healthy weight. And that doesn't have to be just packing up your bag and going to the gym, does it? It can be any kind of physical activity, right? Ab absolutely. Walking your dog, um, going out for a short run, going for a mall walk, and really anything. It doesn't mean you have to necessarily be at the gym, but just being out and being happy. Make it fun for your family. So it, it, it is. It's, you don't have to worry about those things. You don't have to have a gym membership. And when women are diagnosed, um, certainly that, that can just up and everything in their life and so there's probably women who are out there with questions or maybe they're seeking for some connections to some different resources and we're very fortunate that we have two regional health systems right here in yes. Sioux Falls that can handle that situation when they need that medical care but are there other resources that are available to women um, and where should they go to look for information if they need just more information about their diagnosis or maybe connections to support groups or what other resources are out there? So with the American Cancer Society, we have our 1-800 number that's open 24-7, 365. So they can always call there. We have our cancer.org that has so much information out there for people that have questions about their diagnosis. We have a few programs like our Reach to Recovery program that will get them together in support groups that with the exact diagnosis that they are. I mean, we even have programs that will, our Road to Recovery program that will bring them to treatment and our hotel partners that will provide them places to stay. So there are so many resources out there for them. That's great. And for the rest of the community too, cancer.org would be a great place where they could find out about things like Making Strides Against Breast Cancer or Relays for Life and all the different events that the American Cancer Society supports. Absolutely, just search our community and you'll be able to find all of our uh, activities that we have going on. We have tons going on for the month of October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so please check out cancer.org. So the biggest thing for women is, is what would you say, just be aware, be take aware. charge? Be aware, you, you know your body better than anybody and if you see something that you don't think looks right, talk to your doctor. We can't emphasize that in, as the most. You have to talk to your doctor about what's going on with your body. Well, really great reminders, great tips as we're marking um, October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And for more information, you can go to livewellsuefalls.org when we link to the cancer site or go directly to www.cancer.org. And don't forget to wear pink this month. 30 seconds. It's the amount of time this public service announcement will last. And it's the amount of time on your commute that you may be slowed down in a cone zone. These city employees are working hard, and all they ask in return are two simple things. Number one, stay alert. Number two, 
slow down. They all want to get home to their families too. And your patience is greatly appreciated. When you see amber flashing lights or orange traffic cones, stay alert and slow down. Welcome back everybody. Joining me now is Sam Trebilcock, transportation planner for the city of Sioux Falls. Sam, it's a gorgeous day out here. So yeah, we are out and about, it's beautiful. We are in front of something that I'm embarrassed to say is new to me. Right. You know, I'm a cyclist yep. and I haven't seen this. How long has this been up and what is it? Yeah, it was really put up this past spring and it's a bicycle repair station. And it was uh, donated this year um, for, um, you know, location here at uh, Pasley Park. Um, there's another one that's gonna be located, the, the bus transfer facility um, this fall. Okay. And there's another one, the first one was actually located up over by Sertoma Park, just uh, north side of uh, 49th Street. So it's the Ex third one. Explain some of the things that are on here. Well, I mean, you know, one of the main things, you just want to pump up your tires. You know, you're able to do that, you know, with that. And there's a lot of different tools here that you can, you know, adjust your, your bicycle seat or sometimes tighten things or even, um, you know, to change your, your bicycle tire. Um, really kind of a neat thing and even a place to put your bike if you want to uh, Justin, you can see people are using it, it too. It looks like it's being loved yeah. and gently used, as they say. Right. Okay, well, I, I've told you that I am a cyclist. Mm -hmm. I enjoy uh, mountain biking, a little mm -hmm. bit more than road biking. I, mm -hmm. I like to take my chances with trees. Okay. Yes, I like yep. to do that. Uh, tell me about some of the changes that the city's made for the biking sift around Sioux Falls. Well, I think, you know, some of the things that we're really trying to do with the, the system is trying to find ways to um, bring people into the trail system. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, looking at ways that we can bring people on street to the, uh, the, the trail. Okay. Um, one of the projects that we did just last year was like the Maple Street uh, cycle track that we did. And, um, you know, that's really um, finding a way to protect bicyclists and still get them um, from and to and, and to the two different areas of the community. Uh, we're also putting uh, sharrows up in different areas of the community. Um, that's a shared facility that we, we can um, bring people to the trail. Uh, we did one um, on the south side of the system uh, just this past year, bringing up on Tomar Road into Tomar Park. Mm -hmm. um, to, again, to try to get people into the trail system because one of the things that we found is people really want to be um, on this trail system. That's a, Oh, it, a it's a highlight yeah, for the right. city of Sioux Falls. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, Shero, that was a new term for me. Yeah. So maybe, you know, mm -hmm. I know what a bike lane is. Yep. Can you explain what a Shero is? A Shero, you have those, uh, the two chevrons and the bike facility that's on, on the pavement. And it's really, in a lot of cases, almost right in the middle of the lane. And it's indicating to the vehicle and, and to the bicyclist that cyclist. You, this is something that, uh, a shared facility. Play nice. Play nice in that area, share the road. Play nice and, in that area. And that's something that we're really interested in, in, in especially placing on some of our collector routes, our collector roads, some of our local streets that are have a little less volume, a little less tra um, traffic um, speeds and, 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 and people that can get them and, and find ways to, to get from different destinations and again, get into the trail system. You know, we're all members of this community mm -hmm. and we just need to get to our places safely and that's mm -hmm. for cyclists and uh, drivers. Right. It, it, there really is enough for everybody here. Right. Uh, is there a, a movie that you want to talk about? I know there's a, a film yeah. coming up. Well, you know, we, we did a, a, a bike education too, a bike safety education. We think that's really important is that we work with our bicycle committee. Uh, that's something that they really want to encourage. And one of the things that we did this, this year um, with the help of uh, um, uh, CityLink, and, and, and that was to um, put a video together that just talks to and, and educates people that bicyclists are people too. I'm a full-time They employer. are. Yeah, and, and, and just again, talking, and if you, you, you actually go to the, the video and look at it, it's, there's a student, there's a mom, there's a, a, a father, a business person, and, I'm a um, and they're all people, just like they're all the rest of us, any other driver, but then really educating them that they're actually on the road, too, and that they have their own lives, too. Okay, and people can see that on CityLink now? Right. Okay. We've talked about different things. Is there anything else you think that we need to cover? No, I just think, hey, it's, uh, it's fall right now. Let's get out on the trail system. Let's get out on the road and, and enjoy the, the rest of the time. Yeah, there and, may not be many days left like this. Right. But then understand that uh, bicyclists are out there all year round, too. You see more and more on some of them are on, those on, on that fat tire and bikes and all year round. So. Right. Thanks, Sam. You bet. Thank you.
Up next, we're going to try and figure out what in the world Sioux Falls Fire and Rescue is doing out in the landfill. Hi, I'm Division Chief Steve Fessler with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And today we're out at the uh, landfill working with our USAR team on Trench Rescue. Uh, I'd like to introduce Nate Strasser, a uh, newly promoted fire apparatus operator. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about what, uh, what the Trench Rescue is all about. Um, give us a little explanation on what you're doing for training here today or actually for the past three days. Yep. Uh, we came out here to the landfill to uh, practice our skills on trench rescue. It is a pretty technical uh, thing that we do, uh, can be very dangerous, uh, so that's why we like to practice it. As you can see in the background, we've got uh, one deep trench dug here and we've got another different shaped trench dug. Just to uh, kind of practice uh, the different types of rescues that we might be called into for, for trenches, for collapses. Okay, what are some of the, the obstacles that you have to worry about when you're dealing with trench rescue? Uh, yeah, you bet. Uh, the main part of it is uh, the soil sloughing or coming in on uh, somebody that's down in there. That's uh, dirt, of course, is a very heavy object, and when it decides to move, it can trap somebody really good. So okay. that's what we're practicing. And you, we've been out here for the past couple of days. Uh, each shift has been working through it, correct? Yep. Yep, you bet. Uh, we have uh, USAR technicians on all three shifts, and we like to keep them keep them going on all the shifts, uh, keep their skills up yep. to a higher level. So on that's their what consistent practice. training on on all all levels of yep. USAR. Um, how many individuals do we have on you on our USAR team? Uh, we have uh, just as an example, we have rescue eight, rescue uh, four, and rescue five. Okay. We have uh, four people per truck okay. on those on. Uh, on most days, so times three shifts. And we're also part of a, a state task force, I believe, too, right? That's right. Uh, just say that there is an emergency in an outlying town, and uh, we're a resource that can get together with some other people okay. and go there and uh, help them out. Sounds good. Uh, anything else you want to add to about the trench rescue class? Uh, some oh. of the things that have happened is it all re went really well any issues it has gone very well uh, there's always something that we're going to learn no matter how good uh, somebody is yep. uh, we uh, just like to get together and work on it and uh, like to thank the people out here at the landfill they uh, bent over backwards for us to yep. allow us to be able to train so different departments working together within the you city bet. it's a great thing yep well thank you nate if you'd like to learn more about sioux falls fire rescue Go to SiouxFalls.org slash fire. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Up next is Dan at the library sharing with us a program where kids can go after school to feel safe and learn. Welcome back to the library, everybody. I'm Dan Neves, and today I'm at the Oakview Branch Library with Branch Librarian James Borchert. Welcome, James. How are you doing? Great. It's been a while since we've seen you. It has, yeah. A couple years, I think. It has, yeah. And last time we were standing in front of your car. This time we've, uh, we've got something else exciting to talk about. You, every school day, you have like a flood of young people come in after the doors close at school, isn't that right? We do. We, we get uh, a lots of children from the Ann Sullivan Elementary School from across the street there. So why? Is it just because you guys are so awesome? Uh, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got, you've got uh, all these kids coming in, and they're not coming in for nothing. Uh, you have a, you feed them. Right. Uh, in 2015, I... I was you know I'd see the kids come through the door and you know they'd come here and use the computers and we'd have some programming and, and things like that but they always complained about being hungry you know and so I started doing some research and uh, I noticed that there are a couple of feeding programs throughout the country where libraries you know give snacks to kids when they come after school so uh, I reached out to the uh, Feeding South Dakota that we have here in Sioux Falls mm -hmm and uh, kind of pitched the idea to them and they thought it was awesome. So uh, in September of 2015, uh, we started the Food for All program. That's awesome. So what does it look like? <clears throat> well, uh, when the kids come in after school, uh, they come in and we have them put their bags down and then they come in and uh, we give them snack and they hang out in the meeting rooms for you know, 15, 20 minutes or so and then we start some programming. So when you say you've got these kids coming in from Andy Sullivan, uh, you're talking 20, 30 kids? No, we're talking about 100. 100, yeah. 100 young people? <clears throat> yes. My goodness, where does the food come from? How do you feed all these kids? Well, we, uh, 
we have a really great working relationship with Feeding South Dakota. Uh, they have an online ordering program now okay. or uh, you know we can go and and order the food and then they usually deliver it for us. Unbelievable. Yeah. How many volunteers do you have to help you? Oh, well we have one person who works with uh, the state of South Dakota and then the rest are library staff. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're talking five five people maybe for a for hundred young people feeding them. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So they come in after school, they need a place to be, you're feeding them, and then what happens after they eat? You said you have some programming. Uh, you have a captive audience at that point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you do? What kind of programming are you doing? Well, uh, every day we've got uh, programming. Uh, we've got a, a unplug and play. That's where you know we'll do like board games, something to try to get away from the screens. Uh, and then we have chapter blasters on Tuesday, which is where we read a little bit out of a book and uh, <clears throat> kind of talk about the story and the author and things like that. So on Wednesdays, we have uh, alternating weeks, we have we uh, program or a movie. On Thursdays, we have what's called creative kids, and that's kind of a, uh, a make and take type craft, you know, usually relating to a book of some sort. <clears throat> on Friday, we don't have a, a scheduled, organized <clears throat> program. But, uh, for example, last Friday we did a dance program, a uh, dance party. You know, so we had about 50 plus kids in our meeting rooms and they were, you know, doing the whip and the nay nay and things like that, you know, so. So you saw a need in the community. You, you're helping your customers. I mean, th these are why we're here, right? These people right. are why we're here. Yeah. Uh, you, you meet our mission through educational programs. I mean, teaching these kids literacy through chapter blasters or, or unplug and play is just building socialism and education as a whole. Right. Right, so that's awesome stuff. So you can see um, everything you're doing on our website, SiouxLandLIB.org, right? Right. Yeah, Most everything. of these are probably full programs, but are they free to stop by? Do they have to register? Nope, no registration necessary. Um, stop on by. Programs usually start about 315, 320. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's great work you're doing, and, and it's good to mention that you know it, all this food is donated. Right. And you've got, you're working with Feeding South Dakota, another organization in the community. Folks, this is a worthwhile effort, um, and we're doing what libraries do. Well, thanks, James. We'll uh, talk to you again next time. Thanks, Dan. Joining me now is Kylie Breams, the Senior Director of Communications at this amazing place, the zoo. Yes. The Great Plains Zoo, one of my favorite places, and we are here to talk about Zubu. My son is in college, so it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Although I wouldn't mind putting something on and coming and exploring. Give me the actual details. Well, Zubu is coming back um, at the very end of October, okay. October 27th, 28th, and 29th. We plan to welcome over 10,000 adults and kids to the zoo. 10,000. Is that going to yes. be a record number, do you think? You know, last year we hit almost 11,000, so what, we're what? hoping to meet or exceed that this boom, boom. year. Uh, but we love seeing uh, kids uh, coming to the zoo dressed up in their costumes and trick-or-treating throughout the zoo. So we've got treat tents, we've got costume characters, we've got 300 carved and lit jack-o'-lanterns oh, lining the walkways. Lovely, the so zoo. they know exactly where to go. Exactly, so there's a lot to see and do. Okay, now I'm going to say the bad word. Snow. <laughs> what happens if there's snow? You know, the last few years we've really lucked out with some great weather. We're hoping that's the case this year as well. But really, uh, our Zubu fans are diehard fans. Okay, so, that's what I love to hear. So we'll, we'll do it. Rain, sh shine, or snow. Okay, so if people want a little bit more information on Zubu, where should they look? Ticket and uh, pricing information is available at greatzoo.org. Tickets are available for $5 for zoo members and $7 for non-members. Oh, wow. And those are available at the zoo, at Hy-Vee, and at Sioux Falls Lewis locations. Cool, so at Hy-Vee when you're shopping, Stop just by, pick stop up by, your Zubu ticks. Pick up your Zubu ticks. We do really appreciate people uh, getting those ahead of time. It helps uh, minimize the amount of time that you might spend standing in line. Now, if someone like me, an adult, happens to show up, is the pricing, you've gave, given me two prices, same for adults and same for kids? That's right. Because they all pick up the candy. That's right, oh, exactly. Yeah. They Everybody all get the candy. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everybody, for joining me for my inaugural episode of City Scene. For more information, you can always check out this episode on SiouxFalls.org, or you can see it again on YouTube. Once again, thanks, everybody. I'll see you next month.